Now, I don't want to be that guy who thinks you can do stuff better than the big brands, but today I'm going to be that guy. And the reason for it is this. I'm sure we have one or two or maybe five of these, but this is a die holder for holding thread dies. Thankfully, I don't have to use it as much these days because I have a lathe, but it still gets a fair amount of use. And as far as tools go, it's probably one of the worst design tools in the shop, at least ergonomically. And the reason for it comes down to the screws. There's five of them which match up with the dimples on the button die, and that's all fine, except for the fact that I never use them. I know you're probably supposed to, but at most, I only use three. But that's not the problem. The problem is when it comes to taking out the screws, you never know which one is still engaged, and as a result, I always end up unscrewing one of the screws too far, and it drops on the floor, never to be seen again. And without fail, this happens pretty much every time I use the die holder. And honestly, it is a bit of a pain. Now the reason why I use three screws and end up juggling around at the end to try and get it out is because I'm screwing it all up by hand and you need at least three to get a good amount of pressure on the die to sort of lock it in place. However, when it comes to using the die holder in the lathe, I only use one. I think the reason why I can get away with this is because I'm using a hex key to tighten it and therefore I can get enough pressure to hold it in place. And for me, it's always just worked. Now I guess I could switch over to using those hex dies. I'm sure they're a lot easier to hold in place, but I already have three entire sets of dies and it would be a bit costly to replace them. So at least for me, it makes a lot more sense to stick with these dies and simply redesign the holder. The design I'm going for is gonna be in the style of the tap wrench that I made last year. There's gonna be a locking pin that locks the die in place and that's gonna be driven by a handle. And hopefully the handle is large enough that I can get a good enough grip to apply enough force on the die to hold everything in place. At least that's the plan. So I'm gonna start off with a piece of mild steel which will make up the body. It's quite a bit larger than the die to allow me to weld on the handles. First things first though, I need to get it in the lathe and clean up the workpiece. With the front and back now done, I need to do the outside. And since there isn't enough material to actually hold onto it with a chuck, I'll have to hold it on an arbor in order to machine down the outside. And some CA glue should be enough to hold it in place. With that now done, I'll set it up in the milling machine to drill an 8mm through hole. This is mostly there for locating the handles so I can easily weld them in place and make sure that they're straight and centred on the die wrench. And finally, it's back to the lathe to bore out the recess for the button die. Now one thing I didn't count on though was this operation was a real insert killer. 
I know Carbide doesn't like these types of interrupted cuts, which it certainly was here, but normally they last a little bit longer than what I was seeing here. I probably broke two cutting sides in the space of a minute. Now unfortunately I don't have a high speed steel cutter in the correct size for doing this, so I simply swapped out to a different type of cutter and it seemed to work. And that is the body done for the moment. As you can probably see, we have a pretty good fit with the button die, which is what I was looking for. However, it's probably quite obvious that the spot for the screw to go on the die and the hole for the body aren't actually lining up. Unfortunately, that was one issue that I ran up against when I was designing this. The little dimple on the die is in the center of the die and the die itself is actually set above the center line of the die holder itself. And that's for the fact that it needs some material to butt up when it's inside the holder. Now I could have worked around this by bringing the handles up by sort of offsetting them, but I did a mock-up in SolidWorks and that looked really odd. So instead my workaround was instead of clamping on the dimples, I'm actually going to be clamping on that V-slot that runs up along the side of the die. Yes, it will eliminate being able to use split dies in this type of holder, but the reality is only two of my dies are actually split dies, so this isn't going to be a real issue for me. So with that issue now resolved, let's go ahead and make the handles. And here, it's really going to be up to you how you want to go about designing these. For me, I'm going to be keeping the design simple and classic. The one I'm turning down first is going to be the fixed handle, so what I'll do is I'll turn down a little bit at the end to fit in the hole that we drilled earlier, and then I'll turn down the rest of the profile. And because it works so well on the tap handle, I'm also going to add a null pattern. And I don't know about you, but that null came out looking really nice. I can now get the part cut off and then back in the lathe to clean it up. With that now done, I'll start on the other end. Now this end will start out mostly the same, except it's going to need a hole drilled all the way through it. I can now get that parted off and then put back in the chuck to get the threads cut. Now here I'm going to be cutting M12 threads and M12 thread cutting can go either way on this lathe. M12 is a pretty tough thread to cut and here either the tailstock doesn't have enough grip on the holder or the part is going to slip in the chuck. And usually if I can't get it going I'll simply take it out of the chuck and do it in the vice by hand with some V blocks. But thankfully this time I was able to get it to cut. And that goes in there like so. 
Obviously it will be pressed into place and welded, but this gives you a rough idea. But before I do that, let me first make the cap. And again, it's really up to you how you style it. I know some people don't like knurled patterns on their handles, but for me, I really do like it, so I'm going to add the same knurl pattern to this one. Now that was all going perfectly until I got a little bit lazy with the work holding and that pretty much just scrapped the part. That part's no longer around and I doubt I could save it. I also managed to take out the insert itself and a bit of the tool holder too. You would have thought that after all these years I could have seen that coming a mile away, but there you go. At this point there's nothing else I can do but redo that part again. And once I put everything together, it now looks like this, which I think looks really nice. Now off camera, I did make the solid handle again. I made it about one centimeter longer, which is a lot more comfortable and I think it balances out a lot better. Now enjoy this nice looking tool while it lasts because what I have to do now is hammer in the end and then weld it up. Now welding is not my strong suit admittedly, but welding round things is even weaker for me. Sometimes I do wish I was a better welder, but it sort of is what it is. Now I did think about brazing it, but I wasn't sure how it would stand up to the heat treatment processes that I have in store for it. So at least on this occasion, I am going to weld it. Certainly not my best welds, but at least it's not coming apart anytime soon. We now need to get the pin made that's going to lock the die in place. Now since I am going to be hardening the pin, I am going to make from a piece of drill rod or W1 tool steel. It's been a while since I've turned it, and I always forget just how nice W1 tool steel is to work with. Especially doing these light cuts, there's no way I'd be able to do this with mild steel. I'll check the fit and sand down the part that's catching until I get a nice sliding fit.
And finally, I can get the end turned down and add a taper at the end. And the profile should match the cutout in the die. And with that now done, I can now do a quick test. I'll add a spring to the pin, and then I'll screw on the cap. You can now see the pin sticking through, and if I unscrew the cap, the pin will retract. I'll now add the die and push the pin in, and we can now very securely lock it in place. I'd say that the die is held pretty securely in place. But before I do any testing, I would like to do a bit of heat treatment, both to the pin and the die holder itself. The first thing I'll do is the pin, which is relatively straightforward since it's already made out of a tool steel. I'll simply heat the part up to cherry red and then dunk it in a pot of water. Doing this should leave us with a pin that is at least 60 Brockwell C hardness. You could temper it if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's hugely necessary in this instance. The important thing though is the pin should resist deforming whilst it's under load and it should hold up for many years to come. The holder itself is also going to be hardened to make it a bit more durable. I made the holder from mild steel because that's generally what I have on hand and is also quite easy to work with, but mild steel is not hugely durable. I've always joked that if you look at mild steel the wrong way, it's going to pick up a dent or a scratch, and in my experience, that always seems to ring true. Unfortunately, mild steel doesn't have enough carbon in it to quench harden, so I first need to raise the carbon content, then I can quench it. Now, if you haven't seen me do this before, you know, it has been a while since I've done it, but this is a process called case hardening. What I have here is a packing box or a packing case, and it's essentially a square piece of tube with a welded up bottom, and into which I'm gonna place the tap wrench with a mixture of crushed up charcoal and sodium carbonate placed around it. That mixture is gonna be our source of carbon. Now that's going to be covered in a thick layer of fireproof plaster and then I'm going to place it in the furnace. Now it takes about 20 or 30 minutes to heat all the way through and get up to temperature, but what's occurring inside the box is the sodium carbonate and the charcoal are starting to break down and they produce carbon monoxide gas. The carbon is then able to diffuse into the steel and that raises the carbon content on the outside of the steel. It effectively makes a protective high carbon steel case or a high carbon steel shell which we can then quench and harden. It's definitely not the fastest process in the world. The thickness of the casing only grows about 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters per hour. But thankfully the case doesn't need to be hugely thick, at least in this instance. Plus, I also ran out of LPG about an hour in, so that also cut things a little bit short. I can also get away without doing a tamper here, but I do need to be careful not to distort the part as I quench it. Now the oil does leave on a caked layer of residue, which I do need to remove. I'll first soften it in a tub of sodium hydroxide that starts to break it down, and then I'll follow it up on the bench grinder.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the die wrench done. On the whole, I think it came out looking really nice. The outside is also fully hardened and it thankfully didn't distort. I'm also quite pleased that nothing bad happened to the welds as I was heat treating them. I've never had to case harden a part that I've had to weld before, but the welds have held up quite well. Nothing left to do but pop in a die and see if it works. And I'm sure to no one's surprise, it does work. All in all, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. Although, I'm quite surprised that this approach isn't more common, at least on some of the more expensive die wrenches. You know, for 90% of dies and situations that I'm in, I'm sure this would work out just fine. Now, on a final note, I'm not entirely done with this project, but that is where I'm going to leave it for the moment. I will be making a few extras of these to give away to some of my friends, but I think a few things need to be redesigned first before I make any more of these. I think the first thing I'll do is braze everything in place, rather than subject other people to my welds. Now if anyone is interested, I could make a few extras, or I could draw up a nice set of e-drawings so you can make them yourself. If you are interested, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next week.